Lossless compression. What is it and what are applicable algorithms? Lossless compression is a class of data compression algorithms that allow for reconstructing the original data perfectly from the compressed data. There are various types of lossless compression algorithms that attempt to exploit properties of the medium, such as repetition of substrings. By the pigeonhole principle, no lossless compression algorithm can efficiently compress all possible data. For example, some lossless compression algorithms we use include zip files, PNG, and GIF image formats. Information theory. Information theory studies the quantification, storage, and communication of information, according to Wikipedia. In it, entropy is defined as the average level of surprise inherent in the variable's possible outcomes. The concept was introduced in Claude Shannon's landmark 1984 paper, Mathematical Theory of Communication. So how do we define entropy? Given a discrete random variable x with possible outcomes x1 to xn, which occur with probabilities p of x1 up to p of xn, the entropy of x is defined as h, which is the Greek letter h, of x is equal to negative summation i equals 1 to n, p of xi log of p xi. Entropy was originally defined in Shannon's paper, and it's also to describe the probability of surprise. If we have an irregular dice with six sides, where the sides have probabilities of 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and two of them 0 0.05, and then zero of landing, would you be more surprised if one of the sides with 5% probability lands compared to 20%? So let's continue this example. Suppose we had a function where we had to serialize multiple dice rolls and return it over the network. You have six faces denoted from zero up to five. Let's represent each one in binary. In order to do this, we need to have binary strings of length of 3. If we serialize these in a stream, we would be able to denote all different face lengths and be using, on average, precisely 3 bits per face. So this is our first approach, but can we improve this? We can leverage the fact that some dices are uneven, and we use less bits to represent them. For example, we now know to use only 1 bit to represent 50% of dice rolls because the probability of getting face 0 is 50%. So using this new adaptation where 0 is 0, 1 is 100, zero, zero, 2 is 101, perhaps we have more bits for 3 to 5. But using this technique, we're able to save on data being sent over the network. More precisely, if you look at this tree on the right side, you'll notice that all the terminating and pre last bits of each of those sequences are actually a leaf node in this tree. The reason for this is that we're never going to have any confusion ambiguity in terms of the stream and having to know how many bits long as sequences. There's no ambiguous case because they're all prefix free. And this leads us to our first observation. The previous case is the classic example of variable length encoding using prefix free codes. We devise separate codes for different runs and adjust their lengths depending on probability. So this is a concept heavily used in Huffman coding for example. Also formerly we mentioned that by pigeonhole principle no lossless compression algorithm can efficiently compress all possible data. So we actually didn't contradict this statement, even though our data will usually be more compact. Notice how for the later dice rolls we used 4 bits instead of 3, but they're less likely to appear. So the goal of compression is to get as close to entropy as possible. So here are some examples of entropy calculations if you're interested. So there's two main types of lossless compression. It's entropy-based encoding and dictionary-based encoding. For entropy-based encoding, the algorithm first counts the frequency of unique symbols occurring in the document. Then, the compression technique replaces the symbols with the algorithm-generated symbol. In contrast, for dictionary-based encoding, it's also known as substitution encoding, where the encoder maintains a data structure as a dictionary, which matches the substrings chosen from the original text, and if it finds an entry in the dictionary, it replaces it with a reference to that. For example, for dictionary encoding would be the static table in HPAC or QPAC. Some common encodings that we see Gzip uses the deflate algorithm, which is LZ77 and Huffman coding. Bzip uses BWT, MTF, and Huffman coding. It's all over the world we're all using lossless data compression because it makes things faster and reduces network load. HTTP also uses it too. In the accept encoding or the content encoding HTTP headers, we can use Broadly, which is created by Google, and the body, deflate, or Z standard, which is created by Facebook. Also, we have different header algorithms. So, for example, in my videos, I talked about HPAC or QPAC, the different header algorithms. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And please subscribe for new videos every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern.
See you all next week.